Alrighty folks, this asphalt here is a little over 67 feet to that target box up on top there. Let's figure it out. So alright guys, today we are going to be practicing some longer range shots. Now, I want to increase my increase my range, which I think in turn will increase my accuracy uh, overall. So as I get better from farther, I'm thinking it should make me a little bit better from close. Um, so let's see what happens. Um, the whole plan for today is we're going to see if we can figure out uh, if there's any difference difference between the setup or shooting from long range or short range. We're going to try to learn our bands and how our frame reacts uh, shooting from a longer range if there's going to be a drop or whatever um, I'm hoping to be able to to create some some kind of system that'll help somebody uh, including myself go from 10 meters to 20 meters and shorten the learning curve so, I think so all right guys I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown of the gear we're gonna be using today I am gonna be shooting the frame I shoot the best the Titan Hunter and we got it dressed up in some Gong Chi 0.65 uh, rubber we got a taper of 25 to 20 millimeters and my active band length is 170 we are going to be shooting the uh, gzk pit locating pouches for 9.5 millimeter steel and that's what we're shooting today first of all we need to warm up the bands second of all we need to find out how it's going to react at such a longer distance now we could just go ahead and shoot at that uh, at that target and just uh, shoot away shoot away shoot away then when we get lucky we'll uh We'll try to figure out where it is. Now, I highly doubt that I'm going to be able to see where my ball's going at that distance uh, and possibly that speed considering how big these bands are. But I think if we set up a paper, we're going to have a splatter target we could set up over here. We're going to take a couple shots at the splatter target from that distance after we've warmed up and then we're going to see what's happening. So I'm going to aim at the bullseye and then we'll see where exactly the things are landing where or how far it's dropping. If it drops at all, we'll find out. But... That I think is the best way to uh, to uh, gain some knowledge on how our bands are going to react at that distance than it is to just kind of blindly shoot at it and then try to replicate it once we've gotten lucky and hit the target. So uh, let me give me a couple of seconds to warm up, and then we'll start shooting the uh, we'll start shooting that paper target from 20, 20 meters away, and we'll see how we do how we go. Hopefully, I don't stink it up. We better go fix that target. It's looking a little gnarly. So, alrighty, folks, we got a splatter target set up here. We're going to be shooting at that red dot, and uh, this is what it looks like for me all the way back here. And the camera lens is exactly where I'll be standing. So, um, I guess all we have to do now is just uh, get ourselves lined up with that target and uh, rattle off three shots and see how well. Uh, how well the uh, the bands perform at this distance and how much drop there are. So I'm going to try to put my my sight exactly on that uh, red dot, and then we'll see what kind of adjustments we need to make. So guys, on the first round of volleys, uh, I didn't film it just to get an idea of what I was doing here first. I hit one out of five. So we're going to take another five shots, and we're going to shoot and see if we can actually hit the target uh, reasonably enough to actually put a hole in it. Otherwise. Uh, this band set might not be the one <laughs> might not be the one at this distance gotta be honest uh let's give it a go let's see we're getting a lot of drop i have a whole i have uh all my all my shots uh wound up in the catch box but they were going right under the sheet of paper so five more shots and then i'll uh, bring you in close and we'll take a look In the catch box, didn't touch the paper. Same thing. Okay. That's two shots that landed under the paper, aiming at the bullseye. Now we're going to aim at the top of the circle and see what happens.
That's a hit. Don't know where though. That one that's five shots let's have a look so it appears we have one just under the uh, under the bowl one off to the far left and uh, one on the label at the bottom and the side there okay we're gonna shoot five more all right now that we got target all fixed up uh, we're gonna take another five shots and uh, continue to work out uh, how our band how, how our ammo is gonna react over this distance At least you could hear it hit from this distance. That's pretty good. That was a terrible shot. Let's have a look. So, all right, guys, you can see we landed a whole bunch of shots right under that bullseye. Uh, we're going to keep on going and uh, see if we can drop a couple in that bullseye. So, we're getting our line left and right somewhat good, decent, and we're getting a little more consistent. But we need to uh, we need to raise it up a little bit. See if we could drop one in the red. All right. Halfway there, five shots. Last one. Ah, 
I got a little wobbly just before I released. Let's go take a look. All right, we did a lot better this time. We got one, two, possibly three, because that's a gigantic hole in there. Possibly three in the bullseye, and then some around, and we hit a lot, a lot more, a little bit higher up uh, for whatever reason. But I think now we're ready to start shooting at that flipper. Uh, we got a lot more shots in that in that small area, and I think uh, we're getting there. So um, let's go ahead and set up that flipper, and we'll uh, we'll see how we do. Let's take this guy down. It's all busted up anyway. Hang that down, and uh, let's go after this guy now. So you know, guys, I, I do realize that shooting paper is boring as hell. I mean, I'd rather watch. Sometimes it's just boring. I just don't want to do it. I don't. But it is absolutely a crucial learning tool for you. Find your reference point, set it up, line it up, fire off a couple of shots, see how your frame reacts. It'll give you your reference point on your frame. It'll dial in everything for you. After that, it's just concentrating on your form, change your, change your reference point, and you're in like flame. I'm telling you. So, um, I, think, I think now we're ready to uh, go after this flipper. Let's see if we can hit it. It's a much smaller target, but we did land quite a few of those into an eight centimeter circle uh, from that distance, maybe four. So four to 10 is not bad considering I'm 20 meters away and this is the first day I'm doing it seriously. I've always taken a couple of long shots here and there. Sometimes I got lucky, sometimes I look like an idiot. It makes no difference. Today we're learning how to do it properly and I'm hoping that this will give you guys a, uh, anybody starting off just like I am today, uh, an idea of how to how to approach this in a, in a logical manner instead of just uh, you know trying out and trying to remember where you hit from a distance. I think the the paper is crucial, and it doesn't have to be these fancy splatter targets. It can be a simple paper plate with a black dot in the center, and that'll tell you everything. Put a little X in it with a little black dot in the middle, and it'll tell you if you're high, low, left, right, whatever it is, and uh, it'll give you a reference point. So let's go ahead and try out those uh, try out this flipper. I'm excited, I hope we can hit it. Sorry guys, we're gonna go have a, a shot at that flipper. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 11 shots left. We're gonna take all 11, see how, how many times we can hit that flipper. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about what we've learned today and kind of uh, move on from there. So, um, let's get to it, shot number one. There's one. There's four. Five. 
six. Nope. Well, six out of 11 shots. So we're a little, we're a little above 50%, but that's the first day on an eight centimeter circle from 20 meters away. My opinion, that's some legit shooting and uh, it's only gonna get better from here. So we're gonna start practicing a little more from 20 meters. And I thought about this all night, trying to come up with a plan to try to trying to attack this intelligently and I, I think we've done that uh, and I hope hopefully the few tips that I come at you with you guys uh, in this video is going to help uh, somebody uh, extend their range in shooting and maybe increase their accuracy let's go have a seat and uh, let's talk sorry folks I'm not going to pretend to be a, uh, a superstar at uh, catapult shooting I've only been shooting at a, four, a small a small amount of time but I uh, the one thing I do have going for me is uh, I'm a bit of a thinker on some things. So when I'm trying to figure out a way to attack something, I really try to do it in an intelligent way. Um, I kind of think it out, get a game plan, and then I go for it. Now, in this case, I, I knew that the best, the best tool that I could absolutely use to judge what my equipment's doing is by using a paper uh, target to see where my balls were landing after the fact, after release, after the shot. A flipper on its own will not do that for you because you don't really have a reference of where your ball missed. And uh, that's that's an issue. If you're shooting 10 shots and all of your 10 shots hit the flipper, well then you need to drop your flipper down in size and then you still need a reference point to find out how far you're shooting at. So the paper is key. You don't need to buy these fancy targets that I have. Uh, I'll probably never buy those again. I will uh, just go to the dollar store, pick up a pack of paper plates, eight inch in diameter, put an X in it, little black circle in the center and that's it you're on like Donkey Kong um, that'll give you a reference of where it was going so let's do a quick breakdown of what we did today I set up at 10 meters warmed up from there when I got myself on point after about 20 25 30 shots I was uh, nailing everything I hit I said okay it's time to back up let's do it now I could have gone to 15 meters to see how it reacted and then backed up a, a third time but I am a little bit tight for time so I decided to go right to 20 20 meters Ooh, sun's rough go right to 20 meters and start shooting so once we got there we set up the paper we I lined it up like I would shoot at, uh, at 10 meters uh, at 10 meters fired off a couple of shots and saw how my equipment was reacting we were shooting low the first couple of shots hit the bottom of the uh, hit the bottom of the catch box and some of them just sco scooched in this this squeezed in under the paper so I knew I had to change my reference point my first thought was well if I drop my hand down a little bit on my on my anchor point it should uh, raise up the ball a little bit and everything's gonna be good but doing that would have ended up causing me having um, you know like a bad uh, you know bad habits I would get onto my next frame and not know where to put my hand and it would cause me issues and whatnot so I said screw that I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust my I'm going to adjust my my reference point on my frame usually I use the tip of my frame tip corner of my frame at 10 meters and it usually shoots 100% straight and where I put that that corner on as long as my form is right it'll land there today that was not the case because we were shooting such a far distance the ball had a lot of drop off and it was a heavier ammo that I'm used to so I had to change my reference point so instead of shooting off the point I dropped it down to the center of the rivet. See that top rivet here? I was right in the center of that rivet. And the, the great thing about shooting over the top is that when you have it sideways and you're pulling your bands down, you can see where your reference point is still on your fork and you can see where half that target is. So you split that target right in half with your band and then you let it go. And that's what I was doing and we started getting a lot more shots closer to that bullseye. Now, after going uh, three or four rounds, I did discover that the first couple of rounds, I was kind of spraying all over that eight inch target and I was missing one or two where I didn't even hit the target at all. So then I thought about it, well, I seem to be a little bit, a little bit shaky from that far because the bands are heavier than I'm used to 
and uh, and there's a whole bunch of news going on here, right? So I decided to pull out an old archery trick, which was uh, something you don't really hear too much about in the in the slingshot world is back tension. Now in archery, a lot of times the guys will talk. They they all talk about back tension, back tension, back tension, and basically what they're trying to describe to you is is taking your shoulder blades on your back and pinching them together using your back muscles. Now. When you're pulling it back, it's almost like you're trying to take your elbow and your and your um, and your two shoulder blades. You're trying to pull your elbows back, put your two shoulder blades together. So when you're pulling back your your bands and you're looking down your frame, you're using your back tension to go there, and your your back your back will pull back your arms to a point where they won't go anymore, and it, they lock into place. And you'll find that your your um, your frame hand becomes much more stable. So at the beginning, I was shaking around a little bit. So by the time I let go, it was like. And sometimes the ball will go up here, go down there. I was getting a lot of wiggle. When I started locking it in with the back tension, that's where everything came from this to this, which was uh, which was a, was, a, was a major success for me. That's when I decided, okay, let's take away that uh, let's take away that that uh, to paper target and shoot at the flipper. We shot one round and one round only, and we hit that that uh, that flipper six out of eleven shots. For me, I'm very proud of that, and I think once we are, I'm able to hit 10 on 10 with those from 20 meters, we are going to uh, switch that up and take that 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 eight centimeter uh, flipper, and we're going to drop it down to a six, and then we're going to try shooting at that and see how that goes, uh, and 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 so on and so on and so on. So, I hope these few tips help you guys out to get started. I was looking for something online to give me an idea of where to get started on how to shoot longer distances and nobody explains everything. Everyone just shows how far they can shoot. Uh, I wanted to explain it and how I was approaching it and hopefully it will help somebody uh, in the future start shooting at longer distances. Now as far as I'm concerned, it shouldn't make a difference at how far you're shooting at. These steps should still remain the same. Adjusting your fork, your, your fork, uh, your fork reference. Uh, your sight reference on your forks to be able to hit the target and the farther you go back the farther it should drop down that front fork all right just a few things before i go uh if you're looking to get your hands on some of these gong chi bands uh i highly i'll put a link down below to go to caddy shack uh, catapults uh you can see them on the site there uh, i think they're the only place in the uk that has them and there's no place in canada that has anything so you can't get it here but uh it's very possible you might be able to find it in the us not 100 sure but i will tell you this um, I also have uh, a frame uh, that's coming and uh, we are going to be doing a review on that soon. Uh, same kind of deal, a lot of shooting, a lot of having fun, but I think we're going to go do that in the woods, have a good time with that one. And uh, anyway guys, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope this video will help somebody out and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It wasn't too boring for you and I'll see you again soon. You guys uh, get out there and practice and be good to each other. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys enjoy these kind of videos, let me know and I'll try to drop some more knowledge as I, as I, as I obtain it and uh, we can all learn together. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you again soon. Be sure to check out these playlists I dropped here for you and uh, you guys take care journey. and be good to each other.